Howdy folks, Tax Grabbing here with Tax Grabbing Your Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for your Tax Grabbing Your Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Have no fear, there will be an Illinois archery season 2021. The downside is you either have the time to do what you want or the money to do what you want, and you almost never have both. Now years ago, I quit a steady day job to come home and work on the family farm. In addition to making full-time YouTube videos and pursuing that dream. Problem is, I'm me. I have internet infamy that holds me back at every turn. So, things didn't really take off around here how I had hoped that they would. Meaning that I basically have this job here, as in cowboy stuff, plus basically working myself to death at another job because in the current economic situation, I can't exactly just say, nah, I'm just going to be a bum. No, that isn't how I was raised. And it's a job that I'm qualified to do. So hopefully, this will pay forward into me actually being able to do cooler stuff with the channel in the future. Now, we are going to be making a knife sharpening tutorial on this video. And everybody's got a knife sharpening tutorial. There's only really a couple of ways of doing it that actually work. Now, if you've got a better way of doing it, by all means, instead of leaving me a comment telling me I'm doing it wrong, drag out your camera, get your editing software, and fire up your channel and show me how it's done so that I can learn and you put in the effort beyond just telling me that I'm stupid in a comment. Illinois archery season. You ain't seen it yet, because I ain't killed nothing yet, shocking absolutely no one. Oh, hey, you know how this goes. I know how this goes. The deer know how this goes. It's a high stakes game of whack-a-mole. The problem is, I'm almost never able to get out there like I used to be which makes things infinitely more complicated. Got to go out when I can. Got to take the video. Obviously deer aren't going to show up. I'm going to have to bring it home, put everything together, post it when I can, and then get advice on how I should be doing it from people that clearly don't understand the situation that I'm dealing with in how I go about my hunting. Yeah, this is Tex Grabbing Your Outdoors. Wiley Coyote is my spirit animal. Now, I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grabbing Your Outdoors because this is going to be a very lowest common denominator of knife sharpening tutorial. And it's going to be slightly controversial because I like to use a file on the factory edge. After the factory edge is off the knife, it's junk. You have a set angle. When that's done, when that's rounded off, you have to reduce the geometry down. And you do that by knocking off the shoulder on the micro bevel. At least that's how I feel that you do it. Now you can do that with a sander, you can do that with a file. I'm gonna show you the file method that I use so that you can get used to following an angle and you're not taking enough off to really jack up your knife. Now, if you want to show your support for Tex Grab Your Outdoors in a way beyond watching the videos, you can go to TexGrabNearOutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, and my personal favorite, the Kill With Stick shirt. If you want to show your support at ThreeRiversArcher.com for what I do here on Tex Grab Your Outdoors, and get a shipping discount all at the same time on all your trad life supplies, over $100. Use the code TEXTGRAB near your checkout at Three Rivers Archery. That will give you free shipping on all orders over $100. Now, Three Rivers has their own code, but using my code shows that you came there from here. That way, it shows that you guys actually like me. Nobody actually likes me. 
but free shipping is free shipping. If you're in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, or you're looking to take a 12 gauge and make it be able to kill a rhino, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. They also have some really high quality gunsmithing work over there and I'm pretty satisfied with the dealings that I've had with them. Use the code TGO10 at ethicsarchery.com and that will give you 10% off all your orders at Ethics Archery for the Ethics Insert Outsert system for armoring the front of your arrow. No matter how badass your knife is, eventually the factory edge is going to be gone and you're going to have to reprofile the blade so that you can actually get a fresh edge on the knife. Now this is going to be really difficult to actually demonstrate based off the camera angles that I need to get that I probably won't be able to do justice to, but I'll try and explain it. They're going to come most of the time with a micro bevel and then a bevel and then your spine. Now once the factory edge is off, it does you absolutely no good to try and sharpen this micro bevel on the stone. You have to take a file and knock the shoulder off that micro bevel and then raise a burr on both sides. You knock the shoulder off with a file and once you have faded that edge in up to the top of where the blade is ground in, then you can raise a burr and then strike the burr off with a stone and then you would polish out your file marks with the stone as well as then honing the blade with a finer stone and then polishing the blade. But the point is you cannot stone down a knife without taking the shoulder off of this micro bevel so that you can lay it flat and have a very acute angle that is going to give you an edge that is easy to bring back in the field if you need to. A lot of people will go this way and this way. Don't do that. We want to raise a burr by going this way and this way. We also want to make sure that our stone is dressed and even so that we're hitting the knife evenly every pass but we want to go this way and this way, not this way and this way. And I'm just laying it along the actual bevel and just fading that in. Now remember how I said with the stone we wanted to go a particular way? When it's time to do the other side, we will flip the file over and pull it like that. Now this is very difficult to actually show you on film, but start from the tip and work just like this until we fade that micro bevel shoulder off so that we have a very high flat grind on the blade. But we want to go this way and then flip the file over and go this way. Paying attention to it. Do not go like that unless you've got a whole bunch to do. Just we're going to fade that micro bevel off so that it's all even all the way up so that when we lay it on there we have our angle which I can't really show you very well but we have our angle and then you can see space maybe between the actual grind here and the micro bevel. So we want to knock that off both sides and fade it in. And remember, 
when you're doing the hard side of the knife, just like how a lot of flint knappers end up when they have a hafted point, the point ends up having an uneven bevel, it's the same way with knives. Sharpening this side of the knife is always harder than sharpening the easy side of the knife. But just going to fade that in. Well, the sun decided to come out, which is going to make this difficult. Because I can't actually see my viewfinder. You should be able to see that I have knocked off the micro bevel shoulder all the way down both sides of the blade. To where when I actually strike the blade with the file... I will raise a burr from one side to the other side of the blade. That's how we know that we're ready to actually go to the stone. Coarse side of the stone. And we're going to go like this. We are petting the stone so that we always pull a burr rather than cutting the stone like this or like this, don't do that. So, keeping the same bevel every time, which should be easy because we knocked off the micro bevel so that we have a good acute angle so that once this edge does actually come off again, it's going to be really easy to touch up. All we're doing is polishing out our file marks or rather we're grinding them out with the coarse stone and then honing them out with the fine stone and then we're going to polish it on either a belt or a strop however but the important part is we pet the stone not cut the stone we have sharpened with the file we have ground out our file marks with the coarse stone. We're polishing out our coarse stone with the fine stone. And as you can see, based off the shine, we've pretty much put a high flat grind on this blade after we faded in the factory micro bevel where the edge was no longer sharp. And then once I get this polished out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to strop it to convex the edge. But the important part is, once you actually put a good edge on here that you can actually maintain, because it's a high flat grind, it doesn't take much to actually bring it back to a razor because we have reduced the thickness of the edge down and knocked off the shoulder of that factory micro bevel. Once you actually put a good edge on with a file, that's sharpening. Once you've done that, then you can polish and hone with the stones. But once you've got a good edge on, all you should have to do is hone and polish. Now I actually took this in the house to actually do the stropping on my work sharp on the super fine belt just to really polish up that edge to save time not bad for a three dollar Ozark trail knife from Walmart it's just that simple. All you've really got to do is just knock that factory micro bevel right off with a file so that you can raise a burr on both sides and then polish out your file marks with a coarse stone. Polish those marks out with the fine stone and then convex it with a strop. You can really mess up a knife in a hurry using power tools. We've all used bench grinders on pocket knives. We've all used angle grinders. 
And even with belt sanders, you can mess them up in a hurry. So while people are rage cringing at me in the comments that I'm telling people to use files on their knives, the reason that I'm saying to use a file to grind off the factory bevel and reduce that edge down where you can actually pull a burr off of it on both sides of the blade is because the file is more aggressive than the stone because you can really ruin stones in a hurry if you've got a lot of material on a thick edge to take off. However, it isn't nearly as aggressive as say something like this power sander here. And so while a file is dirty, you are less likely to mess up your knife using a file because you can always stone out your file marks. Now remember how I said to pet the stone, not cut the stone. Same goes for sanders. This particular sander turns this way, which means that when I would have it on, I'm going to hold the knife like this, being careful, using safety glasses, not your safety squint, and I'm going to draw it down and being careful of the tip so that I don't weaken the tip. And then on the other side, I would go this way. The reason that I'm doing that is so that I'm always pulling the burr and I'm going on a super shallow angle so that I reduce this down until I knock the shoulder off that edge. Now in this case, this is a 120 grit belt. And on these one inch by 30s, you can get them as aggressive as I think 60 and as fine as 1000 grit. And so I really like this thing. Costs about 80 bucks. And on big knives like this, it does a real good job, especially if you have fine belts to actually finish with. However, I only have the 120 grit belts, so I finish on a work sharp. Now, I don't dislike work sharp, but there are things about work sharp that I do dislike. Remember how I said that you wanted to pet the stone rather than cut the stone? Now on this belt sander here, this work sharp that has the super fine, basically strop belt on it, it's going to turn this direction. You want your edge going this way and this way. You always want to be pulling the shaving, the burr off the edge rather than folding it over, which is why when I use a work sharp, I take the angle guard off and just freehand it because if you put it on the back side, well, that belt's still going to run this way. And you're rolling your edge underneath on the back side, laying it like this. So that's why I just always turn it on both sides. Now this method will work with knives as cheap as a $3 Ozark Trail or a $200 Natchez Bowie. It doesn't really matter. On this one, I actually used the sander. However, you can take off way too much metal with a sander if you don't quite know what you're doing yet. So I would always suggest starting out with the file and basically moving up from there and then stoning out your file marks with a stone and then you hone on the stone and then you 
strop. And now, as you can see, not that a Natchez buoy is actually ever really a dull knife, but once you have taken the factory edge off a knife, you have to completely reprofile it to actually be able to raise a burr on your edge. Once you reduce your edge down, you will be very easily able to actually bring that edge back in the field if you need to. You shouldn't have to sharpen your knives. All you should have to do is hone your knives. Now that's something that I stole from Dave Canterbury of Wilderness Outfitters in the Pathfinder School that he said years ago, and I completely agree with it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this week's episode of Text Grabbing Your Outdoors. As always, good bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at threeriversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement, you good cops out there, and those of you serving in the military ready to die for freedom anywhere. Thanks for watching Text Grabbing Your Outdoors.